Historical photographs of China grew out of my, my research. I'm not a historian of, of photography. Um, I'm a historian of British relations with China. I started interviewing people who'd worked in China in, in the 30s, and they kept pulling out albums of photographs or showing me things when I, when I went to visit them. And after a while I realized that this was quite a valuable archive of material in private hands. A Peking University English department lecturer came to Bristol uh, and he came and knocked on my door and said, although I've been funded by Peking University to come here and, and work on the Romantics, that's actually not what the money's for. The money is for me to try and find old photographs of Peking University uh, because our centenary is coming up and we don't have any old photographs of it. And we wondered if you could help us find collections of missionary photographs, perhaps held overseas, which, which might show us this history. I put two and two together. Uh, and we began the project in about 2006. And very, very quickly were overwhelmed by the material we were finding. And it's material from mainly private hands, although we've worked with a couple of libraries. We borrow people's private family albums, we digitize them, uh, and with their permission, we, we put them online. It's a virtual archive for China. And we've now placed about 9,000 images online. It's an open access site, and you can download the low resolution images and use them for teaching, for search presentations, or even just because you're interested. So here we have Chiang Kai-shek, uh, the Generalissimo, uh, President of China. We've got photographs which date back to 1857, and which are possibly the earliest photographs of Shanghai that exist, through to the early 1950s. We have photographs from Chinese diplomats, British policemen, customs officials, missionaries, tobacco salesmen, you name it, we, we have them. And every week we are contacted by people who have more material. There is enormous curiosity about these things in China because, of course, one consequence of the Cultural Revolution was a lot of this kind of domestic archive was lost. So Robert uh, gets lots of requests from within China itself to display these things or get access to these things. And it's a way in which we can really give back to China a little of its own history. China's 20th century is a century of, of foreign invasions, civil wars, and then the great cultural revolution in, in the late 1960s, uh, when an awful lot of China's cultural heritage was, was destroyed in this left-wing frenzy. Uh, and individuals and, and families, to protect themselves, quite often destroyed all records of their past. So there are nowhere near as many private family albums. Lots of libraries were smashed up uh, and so on. So these records held overseas uh, are much more important than they would otherwise be. As we move forward over, over the next five or 10 years, what I'd like to see is much stronger links with, with China. HRC has been very important in building capacity to, to help us engage with the universities. The British Inter-University China Centre was, was funded by HRC through the ELBAS scheme. And this uh, helped fund studentships and research networking and knowledge exchange partnerships with, with China. I've still got lots to learn and lots of people to meet and there are uh, lots of exciting young scholars uh, in China as well. But I want my colleagues who've never been to China to go there. And I want them to, to start learning from the perspectives that are offered. There's a lot to learn.